Hey everyone, what's up? I'm going to be reviewing a video called Cooked vs Raw Meat on the Carnivore Diet by a guy called Max German. In this video, I will also include a study, which is the latest one that I know of, which compares nutrients in cooked versus raw meat, the minerals and the water-soluble vitamins. There's also other studies, which I will link, which compare the amino acids and the fat-soluble vitamins in cooked versus raw meat. We'll see what he has to say. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a comprehensive breakdown between raw and cooked meat. Some argue that raw meat is better because the new The video is only seven minutes long. You can't really do a comprehensive breakdown in seven minutes. Trends in it are more bioavailable. Whereas others argue that cooked meat is better because the protein is broken down at least to some degree by the cooking and therefore you are better able to absorb the protein in it. So That's a religious belief. Um, you can't argue about it because there is no argument for it, as in there is no proof or any kind of evidence. A lot of people on the carnivore diet will try to tell you that there's some kind of benefits to eating cooked meat and they will give you their religious beliefs, sort of like Anthony Shafee does, as I proved in my video about him. But then um, they will never actually give you any, as I said, proof, reasoning, reasoning even, just nothing. Yeah. So let's have a look at these claims and see if they hold to be true and weigh up both the pros and cons of eating raw and cooked meat. Now, in order to make this video as applicable as possible, I'm only going to be looking at beef. One, because, well, it's the most common meat that people consume. And two, because, well, I mean, most of the other meats, you don't really want to consume them raw, which I'll get into later. Okay, first up, let's look at a study. How the study was done was they got two different types of beef. They got brisket and ribeye. Now, with each cut of meat, they measured the nutrient quantities based on its typical cooking method. So the brisket was slow cooked and the ribeye was grilled. Now, one very important consideration I need you to keep in mind regarding the study is that the meats were cooked to well done. They weren't medium rare like most of you at home probably have. All right, now let's look at... Most people cook their meat well done, whatever kind of meat it is. The more you cook your food, the more you destroy the nutrients. The difference in nutrients. When they grilled the steak, it had 16% less iron than it did when it was raw. And then when they slow cooked it, which essentially they boiled it, it lost 25% of the iron it contained previously. And we see some of the results for potassium, except it's even worse. 24.6% lost when they grilled it and a 55.4% loss when they slow cooked it. And this pattern essentially continued throughout the entire study. There was a massive mineral loss when something was slow cooked. And the justification given in the study was, the losses are due to the leaching of minerals into the broth. Therefore, cooking processes involving water, such as steaming and boiling, affected mineral content the most. So essentially- Yes, exactly. Boiling is probably the worst kind of cooking you can do. Actually, what we can draw from the study is that you do want to be very careful if you are slow cooking meats in water. Now, most of us grill our meat, however. The vast majority of people either cook their meat on a pan or on some sort of grill. So let's have a look at what happens to the nutrient content of beef when you cook it this way. Well, the zinc, it doesn't vary too much. Sodium, you have about 25% less. Magnesium, 15% less. Yes, that's a good point about the sodium. I will also get into that in a second in the study that I will show you. It's just important because the so-called carnivores, the fake carnivores, they salt their food all the time, their meat specifically, because you lose the sodium and then you want uh, a lot of the minerals, of course. Usually when you crave salt, which no human being really does, you actually just crave minerals because you're mineral deficient. And the only way a human being knows how to get them is by consuming salt. Of course, you don't actually get them. You just get an overload of sodium which depletes you even more and causes necrosis in the body, seeing as it kills your cells. These amounts of sodium right away kill your cells because it's an insane amount. It's not found in anything that's alive, in any living organisms. It's crazy that people think that it's normal to put salt on their food nowadays when it only kills. Find any animal or living organism that has such high amounts of sodium. It's impossible. It's absolutely insane, but it's understandable at the same time why people do it because they are so mineral deficient and the more cooked food you eat, the more mineral deficient you will be. Vitamin A, 34% less. Vitamin B1, 75% less. Vitamin B2, 50% less. Now the B vitamins are pretty close to what the other study shows. Now remember, this is for a well done steak. The amount of nutrients you lose from cooking would be on a continuum. It's not as soon as the meat touches the pan or the nutrients evaporate away from it. 
the longer you cook it for, the more nutrients that you lose. So if you do cook your steaks to say rare, you'll have significantly less nutrient in the middle. Exactly, yeah. If you simply sear it on the outside and it's raw in the middle, you don't lose that much. 10, 20%. General loss than you see in this study. So essentially, if you are going to be cooking with water, you're going to lose a lot of the water-soluble nutrients, the fat-soluble nutrients, as well as many minerals. The only solution to this would be to drink the remaining water. But I mean, depending on who you are, you may not want to do that. You can drink the remaining water, but um, would you be able to assimilate the minerals? The water-soluble vitamins would be destroyed anyway because they are heat-sensitive. The minerals may leave the meat, but um, what can your body do with it? When you eat a whole food, you have the enzymes, and uh, that's why you're able to digest and assimilate the nutrients. When you're eating some kind of cooked meat or specifically drinking the cooked uh, broth, let's just say, can your body actually absorb the minerals? Probably some, but how many? Who knows? That's something that hasn't been studied. We can just guess. Why would you guess? Might as well just eat raw meat and no need to guess. You're eating naturally. Nature will do its job as in your body. And you also want to avoid cooking on very high temperatures as you will destroy some nutrients with that process as well. So we know we have more nutrients available to us in raw meat. However, in complete contrary to this, when you cook meat to a moderate temperature, it may actually be that the protein is better able to be absorbed. However, if you overcook the meat, it destroys the protein and you can't absorb it. But again, the first point is a religious belief. No proof. The only proof that we have is for the second point, that cooking meat destroys protein. That's it. We only know that cooking food destroys, obviously because it's heat, it's destructive, it has to. It cannot have any benefits. Now is a good time to go over the study which I wanted to show you. Effect of thermal treatments on selected minerals and water-soluble vitamins of chicken breast meat. You can go through it all yourself. As I said, I will quickly go over it, over all of the charts. One interesting thing before we go over the nutrients and the minerals is in the conclusion actually, which is about collagen. It specifically says that it also dissolved the collagen, which is important because Anthony Chafee was talking about it as if you get more collagen out of it in the video which I reviewed. He was talking about it as if it's beneficial for you to cook the meat, whereas in reality of course we can see that there cannot be any benefits to cooking your meat when it comes to collagen or any of the nutrients, they will always leave the meat and be destroyed because heat is simply destructive. It cannot be anything else. You can go over this yourself. I just wanted to sum it up for the people who don't want to read the study, which is probably most of you. The chicken breast cooked for 12 minutes lost an average of 56% calcium, 38 sodium, similar to what he said before. It always depends on how long you cook the meat, how you cook it, but you always lose nutrients, whether it's the vitamins or minerals or even collagen protein. When we look at the B vitamins, um, it's even worse, of course. B12, 67, uh, C, half. And this was for 16 minutes cooked. Also, when we look at air fried and deep fried, you lose over 80% of the B12. Almost all of it is gone, which is what I always say in my videos, but now we have it black on white here. And uh, this is exactly why vegans say, oh, but meat eaters also have a B12 deficiency. Yes, it's very often the case because these so-called meat eaters eat a deficient form of meat. That's exactly how you should see cooked meat. Cooked meat is simply a deficient, harder to digest, and worse tasting version of meat. That's the only way you should see it. And it can for sure cause deficiencies, of course. Exactly these. Some of these fake carnivores asked me on my Anthony Shafee video, 
what nutrients you will be deficient in if you eat a carnivore diet here you have them if you don't get 100 percent of the nutrients that you're naturally supposed to get then you are by definition deficient because you can only not be deficient if you get 100 percent if it's less than what you're supposed to get you are automatically deficient that's the very definition of the word and these people don't get it they think that if they get a little bit of these nutrients and they are not deficient just because you get a little bit of vitamin a let's just say how can you not be deficient if the optimal amount is uh, five times higher you are by definition deficient by definition on a cooked fake carnivore diet for slaves you are deficient <laughs> I don't know how you do not understand that. But there's very little data to support this, and I don't think it makes much of a difference at all. Now, one thing that is interesting is the protein in plants becomes much more bioavailable when it's cooked because cooking breaks down many of the anti-nutrient defense compounds that are present in these plants. However, since we're eating meat and there are none of these defense compounds. I've never seen any proof for this, but I wouldn't be surprised seeing as the protein is in the fiber. And yes, you have the anti-nutrients. You will, of course, destroy a lot of the protein. Again, would have to see proof. Compounds, this is irrelevant. So, raw meat gives you more nutrients and, well, potentially slightly worse protein absorption. Although, again, I'm... Why do you say maybe, but have zero proof for your belief? Simply, maybe. Is God an elephant? Uh, maybe. Is the moon made out of cheese? Maybe. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> and just said a maybe to it that doesn't prove anything it's, it's just stupid either you have proof for your belief or you don't otherwise it's a religious belief skeptical of that and due to the fact that it has extra nutrients it may actually be more satiating it is hypothesized and i mean this hypothesis makes a great deal of sense everybody who eats raw meat says that they eat less meat all of a sudden because they are much quicker satiated obviously because they're getting over 50 percent more nutrients than they used to get how could it possibly not be so that humans will stay hungry till we've consumed all the nutrients that we require so if you're in the same total volume of food but one contains slightly more nutrients you might actually yes but even what you showed yourself shows that it has way more nutrients not just a few get slightly more full from eating it but again this is very nuanced and it probably doesn't make much of a difference now one thing you do want to be careful of with raw meat is pathogens now this is much worse than this is something that i'm not even going to talk about because i have a whole video about this on rumble it's called the bacteria and parasite deception it goes over it in detail there's no need for me to go over it again meats like chicken and pork is they are much more prone to containing this bacteria however one thing you do want to be careful of is that one thing that i will say is that every animal is full of bacteria we have more bacterial cells than animal cells our whole body is based on bacteria beef is often handled on the same boards as chickens now technically speaking butchers aren't meant to do this but i'm not 100 percent convinced that they always abide by that so do be careful of that so is cooking meat carcinogenic well human i've eaten raw chicken um, from many different places i've never had any problems whatsoever in japan for example they serve raw chicken in restaurants no chicken is just a bird the problem is that the chickens of today are very unhealthy and then you can actually get food poisoning of course because they are so unhealthy but that's exactly what i explain in the video this have actually cooked for a very long time now although it's disputed exactly when we started cooking many believe that it's millions of years ago and there is evidence to suggest that now as to whether or yeah where is the evidence <laughs> what's wrong with these people they just spew their religious beliefs. No, it's carcinogenic. Well, to tell you the truth, it's probably very likely that it is carcinogenic when cooked at super high temperatures. Not only a compound such as... You do create carcinogens, of course. That's not disputable, really. The HCAs 
found in charred meat, which are believed to be carcinogenic, but also just thinking about it from a logical perspective. Burned meat does not taste very pleasant, and this is our taste bud's way of warning us, saying, hey, this is bad for us, we don't want to consume it. It's similar how our nose can sense something's off due to the unpleasant smell it gives away, or how we know many plants are toxic to us by the bitter taste that they have. How exactly, that's what I talk about in my videos always. Simply listen to your senses and you will know what to eat. However, as long as you're not absolutely burning your steak and you're just putting a nice little crisp on it, there's very little evidence to suggest that that's a problem. And based on the fact that we've been doing it for millions of years, it's probably completely fine. Based on the fact... <laughs> fact? <laughs> a fact is something you sense that you know. You go outside, you see people, you know that they are there because you sense them. Talking about a religious belief, which you have no evidence for, from millions of years ago, is the most opposite thing of a fact you could have. It's the literal opposite. Like, <laughs> there cannot be anything further away from a fact. <laughs> now, there are a few raw meats that you want to avoid, one of which is ground beef. And the reason being is that it's put through these minces that heaps of other meats are put through, and there's no way of guaranteeing that it's... I've been eating ground meat from uh, so many different places, bro, for close to nine years now. Never had any problems whatsoever, as in zero. It's been cleaned properly, as well as like I talked about earlier, meats like chicken and pork, which are much more susceptible to carrying these pathogens and bacteria. To be completely honest, I would be very careful eating any meat raw unless you really trust the people that are handling it. Now, in my Well, it's not a bad point, except that it's not about how they handle it. It's about how healthy the animals are. But this is something he doesn't understand, probably because he never really researched the topic. If you see this video, you should watch my video, which I mentioned before, that would clear up a lot for you. Personal experience. When I first started the carnivore diet, I liked my meat on the more well done side. However, as time's gone on, I actually enjoy the taste of basically raw meat. I still see the outsides just from a food safety perspective, but I basically have the inside completely raw. And I think the reason my body over time has started to enjoy the taste of raw meat more is due to the fact that, well, there are more nutrients present in it, like we've seen with the studies earlier. You do have more nutrients the less you cook it. However, you also need to ensure that you're not giving yourself food poisoning. So there is a fine line. However, one thing we can conclude... Yes, but what do you mean? Do you think that you're gonna get food poisoning if you don't cook it, but then if you sear it on the outside, then the food poisoning is gone? You do understand where these words come from, food poisoning. Same in German, Lebensmittelvergiftung, gift, poison. It's always meant the same in every country, in every language, as far as I know. You can tell me how it is in your language. It would be interesting to hear. But as far as I know, it's always the same. It's when you poison yourself. And that's exactly why food poisoning comes from unhealthy animals, which are full of poisons. It's just how it's always been. It's always been about getting poisoned by food. And that wasn't a problem back in the day. It's because of the way we treat animals today. Is that having a steak more on the rear end will have more nutrients in it than having a well done steak. It's actually very interesting because you see right there, he wrote, don't food poison yourself. And you literally say poison, but then you end up talking about bacteria. It's very interesting, right? Because you write something, but then you talk about something completely else. That kind of says everything. That's how deep brainwashing goes. That's how it gets to you. It's pretty crazy. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing below. All right, uh, this wasn't a detailed, comprehensive video by any means, but it did show you that cooked meat has less nutrients. As you could see in the study that I showed you, it's also clearly outlined. And then um, I will also link some other studies, as I said. And you will just see that the protein, the fat soluble and water soluble vitamins, the minerals are all destroyed, or in the case of the minerals, they leave the cooked meat. 
cooking has never been done because it's beneficial, because it's healthy for you. None of that. People used to cook meat if it was frozen and they wanted to warm it up quickly. And realistically, you wouldn't do very much harm to it then, seeing as when you hunt a fresh animal, it's warm. Really, it's hardly distinguishable from cooked meat as far as the warmth and even the texture sort of goes. Of course, if you cook your meat a lot, it's super dry. It's not even comparable, but... Uh, when you eat cooked lungs, for example, if you cook them for a very short time, it will be very similar to having a fresh animal and you take out the lungs and they are very soft and the warmth is just coming out of the lungs and you can very easily eat them. They are a lot softer, whereas if you keep meat refrigerated for a few weeks especially as you know it becomes very dry the water of course isn't there anymore even if you eat lungs which have been frozen especially but even if they have been sitting in the fridge for a while at a very low temperature they are also kind of dryish at least it's not the same anymore at all that's really what we mostly do when we heat up our food. We try to imitate a fresh kill. But seeing as people don't hunt anymore nowadays, they don't even really consciously know why they do it. And uh, if you would ask them, they would tell you that they do it not to get food poisoning. But as I said, you need to watch my video about this to fully understand what food poisoning even means. At least this guy tried to look into it still he wanted to believe that there is a purpose to cooking your food about the protein which he had no proof for and there is no proof for it whatsoever and about the food poisoning i don't blame him this is what we learn as children already as i said it's very deep brainwashing it's hard to get out of it only once you start eating raw you start understanding what's going on. Thanks for watching.